All right, in the last video, I showed how to create a stamp from an image online and how to paint with it and turn it into a normal map. All right, so in this one, uh, what I want to do is just show you an alternative route to this approach. And I'm just going to undo. And in the last video, I got to the point where I had a texture that looked like this. Okay, I had a lot of contrast to it. So please watch that video and get to about right here in the video where you know I have this contrasty image. Now what we're gonna do is create a, a stencil from this. Instead of having a stamp, we're gonna use a stencil. And we're gonna actually have, make an a hybrid between stencil and stamp. So I'm gonna save this out. Um, I will call this scratch five. None with the compression. I'll bring it into mud box. We're going to go with plain. We'll go with orthographic and top view. Then we're going to go to stencil and go ahead and add this as a stencil. Okay. This should be my last one. Yep. Now with stencils, you can do this. We have S, middle, right, and left mouse. So S and right mouse will allow you to scale. And what I want to do is scale it to about right here. Again, I want to make sure I'm in a perfect top position here. And then I'm going to go in and use uh, the sculpting tools. And I want to use a thing called imprint. Turn off the stamp in it. And this is going to take a little bit of time to get it right. So I'm going to start out with like 0.5 at first. Make my brush just a little bit bigger. Just touch the center. Okay. Shift D to add some polygons. It's pretty good. I only want to touch it once. And see how I know where the middle of the document is right there? Okay, a little bit more. So I'm going to put this at 0.75. And just to have a little bit more of adjustment, I'm going to hit a sculpt layer. There we go. Perfect. So now I'm going to go over to paint tools and go to projection. Now this time I can't really see the center of the document. And I'm going to guess it's about right here. Hit OK to that information. Now I can kind of get an idea where it's at. Just go like this and then hit Q. So Q makes it disappear. Now that way I can find the center of the document. So I'm wiggling it around until it bleeds out to the outside edge. Just like that. Okay, hit Q. So now what I have is height information, I have color information, it's all in one package. Just needs a little bit more in that corner right there. There we go. It'll bleed off uh, based upon the height. Well, what I've made is a hybrid. A super stamp. So viewport filters, turn on screen distance and you'll find that I have both height and color. So what I can do here is go to render, save screen image. Now I want this perfectly in the center. Um, how I can get away with that is like this. 
display frame selection and then take the wheel mouse and wheel in now it's perfectly in the center of the document now I'll render the image and choose 1024 1024 and there we go I'll save that image out and I want to call this scratch alpha and then here I have um, my viewport filter so I'm going to turn that one off and again render screen image keep it save image and I'll use this as color map period tiff let's open up both those images Okay, this scratch color map, I want to be able to duplicate this over and I want to duplicate it over to scratch alpha. I'm going to put this at the very top and what I'm going to turn it to do is like soft light or something else. Maybe luminosity. Now I'll drag this to the very top and what I want to do is kind of use this to cut away at the other one. Now this is going to be a little bit difficult because it might not work so uh, holding control I can get a hold of the information. Going down here I can go select inverse and then delete. Okay, let's see what this looks like. We can hit the plus, go down and fill a layer with black. That's what my brush looks like. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. That's Academy Award cool. Okay, so let's go like this. Control E. There we go. We have now our super stamp. And I'll save this as, this is the one I want to keep. Um, I'm going to put it in my directory program files and go into here to Autodesk Mudbox 2014 stamps and I want a TIFF I'll call it Scratch Alpha because it sounds cool and there we go now let's get into a mud box uh, that doesn't have that in there. So this one maybe. New scene, don't save. Cube, shift D. This time remembering to add the polygons to sculpt on. And then hit the add stamp. There's scratch alpha. I don't want that. Let's go to Sculpt. Again, I'll add a new layer here for Sculpt. Here is Scratch Alpha. So this one I should be able to do some really nice surface and if I zoom way in here, yeah, that's some good stuff right there. And it's also going to be good for painting with. So let's go to this side. Let's grab my hairbrush.
And basically I have to set this whole entire thing up again. So I'll keep doing that until I get some clarity in the map. And a little bit more contrast in the map. So there I have the clarity and the contrast. And if I could do the randomization feature. Very cool. So that's creating like super stamps. You'd be the judge of which one you like better. Um, I do like the other one just a little bit more sometimes, but and this one did turn out okay. But you still have to do that whole uh, make a bump map thing. This is a lot nicer to sculpt with, however, because it has nicer depth information to it. You would have to paint this after the fact, however. See how if you get it in the line with, let's say I just went in here and added this texture to it. That looks okay, but you would have to generate an ambient occlusion map in order to line the two up contrast wise. All right, so there we go. So that's one another way to create a stamp. I think that's the last way to create a stamp, to be honest with you. So now we'll look at uh, the stencils.